Minister. So, I reply to star question number 28. A. Yes, sir. B. Sir, the total number of farmers benefited is 26,867. C. Yes, sir. The total disbursement in the program is 13.43 crores. Yes, Mr. Speaker, sir. Say me, I knew from Honorable uh, uh, Chief Minister uh, what kind of uh, policy that the government has been adopted, sir. So the uh, question is quite general, but uh, I'll need to s explain it in about two, three minutes then. So the basic idea here uh, is that um, keeping the entire COVID situation in mind that uh, where uh, last two years there has been a lot of challenges that the general public has faced. And since 80% of the uh, rural households are into farming, so the government of Meghalaya decided that uh, there should be some sort of financial assistance come a pool of revolving fund that should be provided at the grassroots level to, uh, to farmers through producer groups. And therefore, um, uh, this whole process started with uh, discussion with the Honorable Agriculture Minister and myself and the Animal Husbandry Minister that we need to do something to create a, a financial resource at the grassroots level. So hence, we came up with this program called FOCUS. And uh, the objective of this program, as I said, is to give 5,000 rupees per farming household. But the money will not go into the direct account of the beneficiary, but will be given to the group. And therefore, farmers will have to form producer groups. And uh, there will be one member from each family. So there cannot be two members who will be there. Roughly about four and a half lakh families have been identified. And, uh, Within this financial year itself, we have almost 81,000 farmers who have already registered and uh, we have already started uh, dispersing funds. Many of them, before this end of the financial year, will get, almost 81,000 groups, uh, farmers will get. Uh, here in the answer, we have put 26,000 because these have received already. But uh, the process for uh, giving to the rest of the uh, 26 minus 81,000, roughly about uh, uh, 50 plus thousand, uh, the process is already on, and within this financial year, they should be getting this money. And this money, sir, can be used as per the desire of the uh, producer groups. And they can um, use the funds for uh, the benefit of the group. They can use it as a small working capital. They can use it as a small internal loan, uh, kind of a micro bank within their group, where if the group members want to take that money, give it back. Uh, they can use that money for transportation expenditures, which they require. They can use it for small expenditures like buying seed. But whatever they decide, it should be decided by the producer group itself. And in these groups, uh, it's not just for farmers. It's not just like in the sense uh, for farming activity. This can be activities where we have weaving. So there could be textile related uh, uh, groups who would like to take this money. Even they can avail these funds. There could be uh, groups that want to do animal husbandry. So even these individuals can, uh, and groups can be formed and they can uh, take this particular fund. So it's a multi-departmental uh, project. Uh, that's why planning is a nodal agency for this. And um, all different departments are working together because uh, the rural households, as I said, uh, though we call them farmers uh, and we club them into a farming and agriculture sector, but they do different activities which are affected by different uh, departments. So that's in a nutshell, sir. Uh, but as I said, it's a very broad program. But as I said, the basic policy and the idea is to really give a revolving fund, a working capital, cash availability at the grassroots level to these producer groups so that they can use it as and when they require. And the total amount roughly in the next one year uh, will be about a budget of almost 200 crores, 50 crores in the last. And the next financial year, we expect to have another 150 crores for this. <coughs> So when we look to the, to the uh, reply of 28B, so the total number of uh, farmers uh, benefited uh, 26,867. So may I know from Honorable uh, Chief Minister, where did this uh, number, it cover all the 12 districts 12, 12 district in the state or any, only in the East Castle district? So this is in fact uh, covering all the districts 
um, as I was saying, sir, this is a dynamic process. Uh, I'll just tell you, sir, how dynamic it is. That uh, when this uh, question was actually asked, that time we had registration of 72,000 farmers. Okay. And by the time now today I'm replying to this answer, we already have 81,000 farmers, uh, farmers who registered. So in a matter of a week, we had 9,000 more farmers registering uh, into the portal. And therefore, um, as of now, sir, all the districts are covered. Uh, I have the detailed breakup also, but I won't go into that. In fact, every block is covered. And therefore, uh, in different blocks, uh, this uh, scheme is being implemented from East Garo Hills, East Jenti Hills, East Khasi Hills, North Garo Hills, Riboy, South Garo Hills, Southwest Garo Hills, West Jenti Hills, West Khasi Hills, Southwest Khasi Hills. All the districts have been covered. And total, there are 81,000 958 farmers registered and the process of disbursement to them is already on but out of these 81,000 26,000 have actually received the cash the rest will receive it in the next maybe few a month or few weeks time so uh, again if you look to reply or 28c the ship minister said the total disbursement in the program is a 13.40 crore so my, I know from the honorable ship minister in the course of his reply, he specifically mentioned that this disbursement it will go into it will go to the group. May I know from honourable ship minister, honourable ship minister, whether this group have to be registered, or it may, or it, it can be formed by itself. The government uh, uh, recognise them. Uh, so this um, it's a very good question, sir, and I'm glad that uh, the honourable member has asked this question. Uh, so there is a, a process with which these groups are formed. So therefore, um, uh, number one, to answer to his question, primary question, yes, there is a process and registration has to take place. Now, to make that registration happen, uh, we have uh, empaneled a large number of NGOs in different blocks. And uh, it is through these NGOs that uh, these are implementing agencies, basically. And in each block, there is one or two or three uh, agencies or NGOs who then facilitate and go to the grassroots and organize and mobilize um, these uh, uh, farmers and producer groups. So uh, there's a whole process that follows. I, I'll just give you an example. Like under the Maulai, there is a group called RFSD. Uh, that is actually the uh, implementing agency or the NGO that is facilitating the mobilization. In Maupat, there's a uh, organization called GEMS, G-E-M-S. Um, in Mossengram, there is a HFU. In Milim, there is a N -E -I -C -O -R -D. In Peninsula, there is C-O-R-P. So like that, there are different agencies, uh, more than about uh, 30, 40 of them. And these agencies then go to the grassroots, mobilize the farmers, help them to come together, and help them in the registration process. So that's how it is done, sir. So so I'm very much happy, sir, that uh, now we have attained over 50 years of statehood. In the start of the 50 years, Golden Jubilee, that the government have uh, a good policy for the farmers. So may I there's one more question, sir. Whether this uh, revolving fund or the cash that the government will give to, to, to the producer group, whether it is a, a subsidy or is a loan, sir? So the, um, it's a mixed reply. Uh, from the government side, sir, it is a pure subsidy. That means government is giving it to the uh, different organizations and these, sorry, producer groups, but these producer groups don't have to repay it back to the government. But at the end of the day, if the producer group decides that they will use this fund, now if there are 20 members in this group, so they will get 5,000 rupees each, so they'll get one lakh. If this producer group so decides that we will keep this money as a revolving fund for our members and anybody who would like to take money from here has to pay 2% interest to the group back. Like a self-help group model. So they can do that. So therefore from the government side, it is a subsidy. They don't have to repay it back to the government. But how the producer group decides to use it, that can be flexible. They can use it as a loan component to their members. They can use it as a working capital. They can use it as a revolving fund. They can use it as an infrastructural fund, whatever the producer group decides to do, sir. Sir, last question, sir. So what I want that uh, 
this uh, policy, the program, or introduced by the by the present government, you will it should we will it be uh, sustainable? You understand that this year 50 crore the government will, will spend then uh, this this uh, uh, financial year another 150 crore will be 200 crore. But what I want to say is it should be uh, sustained in future so that people will uh, will be survived. So the last question is uh, I would like to uh, get from honourable uh, uh, from honourable chief minister, minister. Whether in one project group, because according to understand, maybe ten in, in one group we we may have what ten. 12 or 15 in one group how many how how much money that that the government supposed to give to to one project group so so there are two questions uh, yeah. he asked two questions uh, so the first question i'll i mean the second part i'll reply which is quicker so that uh, we have proposed that there should be anything between 10 to 20 members uh, and uh, the reason is because we feel it's a manageable number um, there could be people who might go beyond 20. We have not explored that option. Most people who are coming to us are coming with a group of 10 to maximum 20. So which means, as I said, 5,000 rupees each. So any group will get anything between 50,000 to 1 lakh. So that's the first part, sir. So second part uh, of the uh, reply is, sir, that when we do some programs, we cannot see a program in isolation, sir. We have to realize that there is a policy that surrounds everything. Now, um, if you look at the focus program, it is one of the policies and programs that we are doing to help the farmers. <clears throat> now, beyond this, these groups can form IVCS. Under the IVCS, it is Integrated Village Cooperative Societies. There is a loan component that they can take up to five lakhs to have uh, you know, uh, storage spaces made for themselves. They can use this money, again, interest-free. This money, they can use it again for uh, programs like um, cold storage, which I just recently inaugurated in Raksamgri. We'll be doing it in many locations. They can then have a, another IVCS uh, loan component, a working capital of 7 lakhs is given to the, uh, to the IVCS, who would then use this money to be able to take and buy the products from the farmers so that the farmers don't have to sell it at a cheap rate. And they can then store it in the storage place, which I talked about. So there is a focus program. There's the IVCS program. There's a self-help group movement under NRLM. Now, under NRLM, we have distributed 210 crores to different groups. These groups also do farming activities. And they can also be people who are then linked to this entire focus and producer group program. So there's a third program that is there. Then we have the missions that we have. The Lakadong mission, the, uh, uh, you know, the uh, poultry mission, which is going to come up, the uh, dairy mission, the uh, piggery mission. Under these different missions, more than 500 crores will be given to different cooperative societies. What I'm trying to say, sir, in reply is that when we look at a policy, it, it, you will not get the full picture if you look at it in isolation. You need to understand that there are many activities and policies going on at different levels in different capacity. And the overall impact of all these programs is what ultimately has to be seen. So therefore, we felt that there was a gap in this whole process where the farmers were not having the required working capital at the grassroots level. Sometimes farmers would have to pre-sell their product just because they don't have money to buy seeds. Sometimes they did, had to pre-sell their products because they don't have the money to transport their product from their field to the market. Now this 50,000 rupees could help them to bridge that gap. So my reply sir, to this is, uh, one has to see the policy of the government from a larger helicopter view. It cannot be seen as only one um, uh, program. And yes, if we feel that this program is being sustainable and is actually helping the farmers in the long run, we could decide to extend this. We can work towards moving towards that because, sir, we spend about 15,500 crores as a government in this financial year we'll be spending. When we spend 15,500 crores, a 200 crore amount out of this 15,500 going to four and a half lakh families is very much justified if you look at it. And therefore, yes, when you look at 200 crores, one may think so much of money you're giving, whether it will be beneficial or not. I think one has to always see the larger picture. So out of this 15,500 crores of annual expenditure, 200 crores is going to farmers. Yes, there could be groups who may not do well, 
who may misuse utilization or may use, misutilize the funds. But that's part of the process, sir. But four and a half lakh families getting this help is what we are looking at. And as I said, one has to see the larger goal, the larger picture, and that's when you will see where this particular scheme fits in. And that's the reason why we're doing it. And in the long run, sir, keeping all those programs in mind, we're very hopeful that uh, it will be sustainable, and we're very hopeful that it will make a difference in the farmers' lives. Honorable Speaker, sir. I would like to thank the Honorable CM for elaborate explanation about the benefit to the farmers uh, through uh, different producer groups in the city. When we talk about farmers, it, it links with the new policies, with the market, uh, where they will sell all this produce, agricultural produce, or be it vegetables, be it the weavers. So we have to uh, look at it from different angles also. I would like to know from the Honourable Chief Minister any intention, any plan for different producer group after they will produce any kind of agricultural produce or uh, the weavers, the, 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 market, the market link that has to be there to explore the possibility how they can stand in their own field. So I, we would like to know the intention of the government to different policies that will be brought uh, in days to come. Uh, this is my first question, sir. Um, sir, again, a very valid question, but uh, again, a very broad question, sir. So market linkage is a major hurdle when it comes to the farmers. So we have realized these challenges, and we've also realized, sir, that uh, it needs multi-pronged approach. First, we need to create the market, farmers' markets. We need to realize that um, these farmers' markets need to be having the proper infrastructure, and they should be run by the farmers themselves. So there's a large program going on by the government today where we're putting up farmers' markets, which are run by the farmers' cooperative society. So that's number one, sir. Number two, we have realized that government cannot do everything. We need to realize that in an economic, uh, you know, uh, ecosystem, the ecosystem that we have for, the, for this agriculture uh, economics. We need to realize that the farmer is there at the bottom of the pyramid in the sense they're doing all the uh, you know, cultivation and getting the products. Then we have the different IVCS groups and the cooperative societies, producer groups that actually will help them aggregate and collectivization will take place so that they can actually have the quantity and the price that they deserve. The third level comes in where the processing starts. So you need to add value to these products. So therefore, again, through these cooperative societies or through entrepreneurs, we ultimately will be able to get to the processing part. And further than that, then we come to the point where the entrepreneurs will then market these products outside. So we have realized that entrepreneurship is a major link between the market and the farmers. And that's the reason why programs like Prime have come up. So Prime program is a program where we help entrepreneurs. Now, uh, we are coming up with another program called Prime Hubs. So you'll be happy to know, which of course we didn't show yesterday, that these Prime Hubs, an uh, example I'll give you, there's one Prime Hub we've opened in Songsha. In this Prime Hub, not only do they have the uh, machines for processing ginger and turmeric, and juice and chips, they also have international quality packaging material, which they then are able to take the products from the farmers, package it and make it, uh, process it for them, and then they will then further link it to the market outside. So therefore, sir, uh, again, there is no one line answer to this, and I can, you know, give more, you know, elaborate information on that, but as I said, you need to realize that the entire ecosystem, how it works, and realize that uh, government will have to do a certain part where we have, you know, uh, programs like we had the Food Fest, where we had the CR Food Show in 2019. We had intended to have it every year, but because of the COVID situation, we could not. So we're going to have the CR Food Show again in the month of May this year also. So having programs like these will expose those products to international markets, uh, ensuring that the, at the grassroots level, we have large numbers of farmers' markets, so I hope that by the end of the next uh, uh, financial year, 
we should be having anything about 70 to 80 farmers markets run by the farmers themselves. We need to then see that entrepreneurship is uh, coming into the linking the entire uh, space between the farmers and the buyers. So, so it's a multiple uh, thing and there's no one answer to this and I think we'll need a full motion uh, to be able to describe. So I think in the question answer or the question hour, I think it would not be appropriate for me to speak any further or give more details, but I hope that satisfies the Honourable Member. Just, <coughs> just one, yeah. sir. With, with regard, because I came from Ribhoi, the district with, uh, the, which produced more vegetables, pineapples. So with regards to facilities or policies that the Government Agriculture Department will look into, with regards to the storage facilities for pineapples and other vegetables, we would like to uh, suggest that the government will look into this, especially in Nongpo, one of the areas which produce more pineapples. So there is no proper storage facility. So I would like to suggest the government to look into it. Sir, I would like to take this opportunity to uh, give a very uh, positive suggestion to the honourable member. So as I was mentioning, we have a program under the IVCS, Integrated Village Cooperative Society. If these cooperative societies are formed, we are giving five lakhs to these cooperative societies as loan to set up the storage units. So therefore, uh, government will not come into the picture. This will be run by the cooperative societies. And to give an example of this, we recently gave one IVCS in Raksambri. We gave them a solar-powered cold storage. It's live. I went inside it. It's, it's really cold inside. So I, I, I went inside and I saw it. It's working beautifully. So there's no need for power connection. It runs fully on solar. And I think it will be an ideal investment for Ribhoi, especially keeping in mind that we have uh, you know, products that perish, like pineapple. So with this uh, solar-powered cold storage system, I don't remember the exact uh, size means in terms of metric tons. I can't remember how much it was. But it's decent enough. So if 10, 15, 20 such IVCS groups come up, we are ready to fund them give them this particular cold storage, solar-powered cold storage, and I think it will make a huge difference in the farmers' lives, especially in the Ripple.